Hi. I'm doing this video right now because I have, for the most part, tried to record videos when I'm in a good mood and um, tried to portray this happy, um, positive image of myself and um, especially with doing <clears throat> the latest soft white underbelly interviews. Um, I've just tried to, uh, you know, be positive and, uh, I feel like, you know, because there's people watching and, um, following the story that they, um, you know, the people that care want a happy ending. For the most part, I've been honest, I've been myself, and I haven't lied or sugarcoated anything for the most part, but not everything's always great. I mean, I've kind of hit a wall, I guess, now in my sobriety. Um, basically, um, I mean, for those of you that listened to the podcast that I did, that was three and a half hours long, I don't expect everybody to listen to that. I don't expect anybody to listen to it because I don't, I wouldn't even, I, I don't even want to listen to myself for three and a half hours, but, um, uh, I don't know. I just think I'm. I'm like not that great of a person. I have problems, issues. I have a lot of issues. I'm codependent. I make terrible decisions. I make bad decisions all the time. I do stupid shit. And I mean that's apparent. That's very clear. Because I'm a drug addict. You know, I'm a drug addict. And I made bad decisions for a long time. I've tried to make good decisions recently. I've tried to remain sober and tell myself that that's what's going to make the world a difference, that if I remain sober that things are going to work out. But now as I look back and wonder and think, I'm like, maybe I was just fooling myself. Maybe I'm just like, drinking the my own Kool-Aid, like, that I think, oh, if I remain sober, like, everything will be great, you know? Um, that everything's gonna work out. And, um, I don't know, maybe it was, maybe it did, I don't know. Who knows? You never know what's working out or what's not, or what's the right thing or the wrong thing until you do it. And then, once you make that wrong decision, it could crumble everything to the ground or burn everything to the ground or whatever. Or maybe, maybe if I um, make the right decisions, it still ends up to the wrong place. So I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm not gonna try to act like I know all these things or that I'm gonna do these videos or, or say, what's right or what's wrong or be positive or encouraging. Um, I definitely appreciate the few people that have said that I've helped them in some way or that I've made some type of difference. And that's cool. I really appreciate that. I never expected that. And um, I'm happy, but I, I don't feel like I'm the right person to make any difference in anybody's life. Um, you know, I just like, I'm just a, I'm just not a good person. I'm just, uh, you know, in the past I've gone through bad breakups and I've been mean to people and I've like gotten drunk and like left crazy voicemails or said mean things or, you know, just acted crazy and I feel bad about that and I'm not like really I'm just like not I don't want to be that way anymore no matter what it is no matter if it's friendships relationships 
for what it is. I don't want to be spiteful anymore. I don't want to be mean. Um, so I'm really sorry to anybody that I've hurt. If anybody that I've hurt is watching this, I don't want to be that kind of person. And I'm sorry that I was. Um, basically, I guess I've just been, for the last month and a half, um, I guess it's kind of a pink cloud because I thought everything was great. I thought I was doing the right things and I was just making my decisions sober for the most part and I fucked up. I had a friend, well, I had a, somebody from the residential I was at pick me up on Friday and he asked me if I wanted to go to a meeting that another guy from the residential was speaking at. And I said, yeah, oh yeah, that'd be great. And then I, I had a, I kind of had it in my mind since I left the residential that it wouldn't be a good idea to hang out with this guy. I just thought that he wasn't the best, I don't know. But I just thought, yeah, like it's, we're going to a meeting and we're, you know, doing the right thing. So he picked me up and right before the meeting he went to the liquor store and he bought um, some little shots of vodka and he told me that he was still drinking. And I could, I can't change that about him. I can only accept and change things that I do. But we went to the meeting and it was great for the most part. It was nice to talk and nice to see the other guy from the residential and he was, you know, saying I looked really good and that I sounded really good and everything. And then afterwards, the guy that drove, he wanted to go to the liquor store again. And he said he'd buy me whatever I wanted. And so I drank and I kept drinking with him because it was fun. And I knew that going into it, that to drink with this person I always thought would be really fun. In the end, it was completely stupid. It was completely asinine. And um, I wish I didn't. I wish I had the, um, the willpower not to. But that's something I've always struggled with is self-control. And especially with somebody offering to buy me whatever alcohol I wanted. So I was like, cool, I can get like nice expensive beer, like craft beer that I like and I don't have to worry about $7 a pint or whatever, like that's cool. And so we drank and drank and a couple hours later he was to the point where he was so drunk that he was passing out and he was driving. So he asked me to drive while he, I guess, slept it off. And at that point I was buzzed and I was feeling great and wasn't thinking about anybody else that cared about me or anything, was just being selfish and crazy. And so knowing I had the keys and could drive wherever I want and that he was asleep. And so I decided to go to Skid Row about a block away from Mark's studio, Soft White Underbelly Mark, his studio because I knew there was people near there that were, had drugs. And so I decided to go buy drugs. And I really didn't care what I bought at that point, but I feel like I kind of knew what I was getting into and what I was going to do. And so I parked and I, I told him he had woken up by that point and I told him I'm going to buy fentanyl and I said, if I overdose or if I stop breathing or anything, like please call the, please call 911 immediately. I didn't have any Narcan, just, which I mean at this point, you know, the guy's wasted. And so, I mean, why is he gonna, you know? And so I got out around the corner from our studio and there was this girl, she was probably, you know, in her late twenties or early thirties or whatever. She was in like a two-piece pink bikini, like tube top. 
and she was clear and she lived in a tent she came out of a tent and so you know I instantly knew all well, this person gets down in some way or another and so I asked her if there was any black black tar heroin nearby and she said she didn't really know so I said what about fentanyl and she said how much are you trying to get and I said just twenty dollars and she said yeah I can sell you that and so we went in the tent together and um, you know me running my mouth and stuff just uh, was talking to her and it was really it's like this like I said in the first interview sometimes it's the fucked up things in the world that's like the beauty of the world and she was clearly a prostitute but like talking to her like listening to her and talking to her it was like it was so nice just the two of us like sharing that moment because I'm sure she's really used to like dealing with people trying to take advantage of her or get something from her or use her or treat her like you know a piece of meat or something and I was just genuinely interested in talking to her while she was weighing out the drugs for me obviously you know it wasn't like oh I just went up to this person and just wanted to know her and be there for her or anything but you know she told me her name and I told her you know about being on soft white underbelly and stuff and told her that I was a month and a half sober and she was really hesitant to sell it to me at that point but I assured her everything was fine and she's like you have Narcan right I'm like yeah yeah totally which I didn't um and then the dude that I was work, right, or driving his truck he like woke up and came in and was just like annoying and we were both like dude go away like anyway it was just like talking to her that was like this is somebody's daughter like this is somebody's kid like that probably maybe you know I mean I don't know what her childhood was like you know maybe she was abused and I mean it's likely that she had a rough childhood but you never know like that could have been somebody's daughter that they loved and cared for and, and now she's on skid row like selling herself to get by and being a fentanyl addict and stuff and so anyway so I went and I did the fentanyl and in my mind I just did a little bit and acted normal but I saw a video on my phone later and saw myself nodding off and being completely out of it and it's disgusting like I'm a terrible person I'm not any type of role model I'm not any type of person to look up to I'm not any type of person to love or care about or like or anything and so I did that and then I got kicked out of the residential I mean the sober living I was at and I slept in my car that night and since the past week of that residential I was in before that I had been talking to a girl online that I was really infatuated with and uh you know, they say don't get in a relationship for a year and all that stuff. And, and you know, like I said, if you listen to that podcast or watched, you know, a certain couple of videos on my channel, then you know I've been, I'm 36 and I've been on the internet since I was 12. And I've met girls in different ways or another since then. I have gone across the country a couple of times for different girls nothing ever works out it's always something you know things never work out and so I should have not done that I didn't have any intention from the start I just thought she was an interesting person and I thought that she was an interesting artist I will admit I was maybe um swayed by the amount of followers she had which piqued my interest, and I was like, wow, this is a person with all these followers. Um, you know, we started talking, and I didn't, I didn't have any intentions, you know? I didn't even know what she looked like. I just, uh, I just, um, I just, you know, I was just being myself, and just trying to be 
vulnerable and unapologetically myself and all that. Um, anyway, so we talked, you know, for a, a while and we got to the point where we're talking all the time and, you know, just got to know her and, and that's the thing is it's like getting to know somebody on the internet. I mean, what can you do? There's some people that are like, I met my fucking wife or my boyfriend or, you know, husband on the internet. And we have kids now and everything's great. Maybe that's just not me. Maybe that's just never going to be me. Maybe things are never going to work out. Like, maybe I need to give up on that. And I really do think I should because that's stupid that I've done this so many times and it never works out. So... I relapsed on Friday, like I said, and she was very supportive, despite me acting like a complete fucking idiot. And, uh, and I don't know if it was desperation or if it's something that she wanted to say or something and just felt like it was the right time, I don't know. But she told me she loved me. And it was, uh, I don't know. It was just like... Usually I'm the one saying I love somebody first, you know? So it was really... It was nice to hear. And so... I knew I was getting kicked out. And she lived a couple of states away. And we had already been talking, you know, for about a month. And we already kind of had a plan that at the end of that month I was going to moved to the city she was in, but I was still going to go to sober living and everything. And so, I was just like, went to sleep that night in my car. And the guys at the sober living helped me pack, helped pack my stuff. And <clears throat> a couple of them were really supportive and nice. And so the next day, I, uh, I just, I talked, talked to her and, talk to, you know, close people I was close with and said, all right, I'm going to go to this new state and I'm just going to stay with this person for maybe a couple weeks and figure out another sober living. And so I did that and I drove 13 hours to another state that I've never been to, another city I've never been to, person I've never met in person, just, you know. FaceTime and talking on the phone and again like I've done before thinking I know the situation and know everything and so I got there on the first day I left at 8 a.m. I got there at 11 p.m. and it, you know it was nice were nice and I just felt like I could be myself anyway doesn't matter all the like little things in between and maybe the way I felt about certain things and I can't speak for her or anything it just seemed like you know I don't know Maybe we were like kind of lazy, but we were like just spending time together, getting to know one another. And I just felt like there was a connection, but you know, that's how I've always felt. But also, I wouldn't go do these things. So, um, I don't know. Things weren't perfect, but things weren't bad at all either. I thought things were good. <sighs> then we watched this movie, I Heart Huckabees, which was one of our favorite movies. If you've seen it, you know, it's like all about this like existential shit. I feel like that like got in my head. I was like thinking a lot about like, do you embrace like the good things? And like, do you embrace the darkness? Or is everything like, meant to happen is it all connected like this and that and 
you know, it wasn't a huge deal. I loved the movie. I'm glad I saw it. It's just, it got, I feel like it got in the back of my head. And I feel like I would wake up after that kind of like wondering what my purpose was, what the point is, why am I doing this, why am I doing that, why am I not doing this, why am I not doing that, why don't I just go with the flow, or why don't, I don't know, it was weird, and um, yesterday, which was Tuesday, which was the third day I was there, um, can't remember exactly what it was, but we had a little argument and she had said, um, you know, like, if you don't like it, like, you can leave or whatever. And that really hurt me. It was really hurtful to um, be three days in and it being, you know, taking that leap of faith to go, you know, to drive 13 hours and, 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 and then hear that, like, it just felt like a piece of crap. And I just felt like it scared me that somebody can, that I, that, that all that could happen and somebody could just think like, well, you can just leave. And so that was hard to deal with. And so I had a weird day. We had a weird day. And uh, we tried to get, you know, past it in the middle of the day, but I think things still were weird at night. I tried to go like, just eat some lunch and get away, which I've said recently that, um, <clears throat> that, um, it's best for me to just walk away from things sometimes and calm down for an hour, but I don't know, something didn't work about that, and so, <sighs> so last night I went to a, like, brew pub or whatever, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have a couple of beers, and I'm going to eat, and I'm just going to be fine. And I did. I had just two beers. I talked to the bartender. I talked to the people who were next to me. It was a very enjoyable time. And I left thinking, wow, I did that, and I don't want to drink anymore. I don't want to get high. I feel good. But I also knew that this person expected me to stay sober and be sober. And she had already known that I relapsed on Friday. And she had told me, you know, that she has problems smelling or something or whatever. And so, you know, oh, it'd probably be easy for me to lie or, or get away with things, but I didn't want to be that way. And so I was honest. And I, I know she was a little upset by it, but she, she said she appreciated me being honest. And it seemed like our night, well, I mean, it seemed, I mean, I know our night went great after that. We had a really great night. Like we, I mean, we pretty much every night, pretty much all day, every day and all night was great, except for just these little moments where maybe I was just letting my head and my heart or whatever, or my doubts or existential bullshit get the best of me. I wish I didn't. I wish I would have just kept my mouth shut. Anyway. Mm. So, yeah. I went to bed and I, I thought everything was good. and I didn't feel like, you know, there was any, um, I don't know. So I woke up today and I was feeling kind of weird again. She seemed a little distant, rightfully so. She was probably upset, you know, because I relapsed or, you know, it's probably triggering for her. And the night, you know, last night we were talking about like acid and doing it eventually. And, you know, it's just, I guess I should have thought of her feelings more and, and not been like just so goofy or yeah, maybe it's because I had two beers. I was just aloof or whatever. So, um, yeah. Today I could tell things were weird again. And I was having my existential crisis bullshit again. And I can't remember what was said. 
but it was really a really stupid, terrible joke of me to make, or whatever my personality, I don't know what's wrong with me, but she said something and I was like, I was applying for jobs and I was like, okay, maybe I need to get a job and like, maybe I need to go for a walk. And I like called a friend and I was trying to talk things through and I was trying to like get through it. And then um, she had asked me something and my dumbass was like, yeah, maybe I'll just kill myself. And, you know, that was really stupid to say. And, um, uh, and some time went by and things were weird and we weren't really talking. And so I was like, well, maybe I just need to go for a walk or go get something to eat. And so I did that. I went for a walk. I went and got something to eat. And... I was just being my weird, like, wannabe, artsy self or some bullshit, like, being all cryptic and shit on Instagram, like, posting dumb shit, like, I, I, I was just feeling like, I don't know, I, I didn't, like, I just, you know, I posted, like, how I feel when I see, like, younger people being artistic, how I feel good, and, like, was making jokes about my tattoo and how, like, oh, I'm, like, look, I'm a gang member. And there was a sign in the bathroom that said something about saving water. And I was like, oh, somebody save me. Like, I was just being dramatic and goofy and cryptic and, like, you know. And um, I put a song on it that was, like, you know, it was about, it says you make me feel like shit, I want to kill myself. And that was fucking stupid. I didn't mean it or anything, it's just the song, I like the song, I miss the guy, Greg Ashley, he was like in Oakland, he he lived and like ran mainly the one of the places I used to play at all the time, and I was just thinking of him, and I didn't like mean anything by it, I was stupid, I shouldn't have posted it, but anyway, I don't even know if she saw it, or I mean, she probably did, but anyway, so afterwards, I went to the guitar store because I was thinking maybe I need to get a guitar because maybe I need to have an outlet and maybe I need to be, you know, creative or channel my feelings artistically. And so if I have a guitar, then, you know, maybe I can do that. And so I spent some time there. I spoke to a friend of mine um, and then I started to head back and I went to the, I went to Starbucks and I got her and I coffee and I started walking back. And I was talking to a friend on the phone, just kind of speaking, you know, talking through my bullshit and just thinking, okay, I'm in a better mindset. I'm going to go back and I'm going to, um, like, you know, I'm going to give her the coffee and just try to talk things through and hopefully we can, you know, articulate our feelings and get through this. And so I was two minutes away from the house and she called me. And but I was on the phone with my friend, so I was like, I'm about to be at the house. But then she called me again, and I was like, well, I have to answer this. And so I answered the phone, and she was like, oh, I want you to leave. And so I was like, oh, here we go again. Like, been through this before. And before it was, you know, because I got blacked out drunk and acting like an idiot, you know, and stuff. And so this time I was like, damn, like, I... I had two beers and I was honest about it. I thought things were, but you know, it was me saying stupid shit about wanting to die, which I mean, I don't know. I'm 36 years old. Like I, this has nothing to do with her. This has nothing to do with like, it's just, uh, there's times where I feel like, I mean, I can't help it. I can't help it. I'm just being honest. There's just times where I just feel like it would be better if I was dead. But I can't do that to my family. I can't do that to people, like, that care about me, you know, that I've known for a while. and Or people have tried to help me. And so, anyway. I mean. I mean, maybe one day that'll go away, that feeling. But it's not, it's just not. I mean, I felt that way on and off since I was 14. I remember being 14 years old and listening to like Slipknot CD on my Walkman, like th cutting myself thinking like I wanted to die, you know? Like, 
I don't, I don't think I'm a bad person or something. Or I don't think I'm crazy. I just like, I don't know. Just sometimes I feel, I just feel so overwhelmed by the world and I feel so pointless and so stupid and, and dumb. And just like, what the fuck's the point of anything? Like, why am I doing anything? Why am I doing this shit on YouTube? Why am I fucking, why don't I have Instagram? Like, why do I try to get a job? Like, why do I go for a walk? Why do I pet a dog? Why do I fall in love? You know, like all of it. It's not anything specific. It's not any specific person or anything anybody does. It's just like, it's just weird, you know, and I can't help it. I just uh, want to be honest and open and stop just like posting like positive shit. I mean, it's good to post positive shit, but I mean, I just want to be honest and, and open and um, just talk about this. I guess it's mental health and you know, it's like, yeah, that's the other thing. It's 2022 and we're all so aware of mental health and we're all so selective in things we say and how we treat people and what we do and how we live our lives and this and that. And it's like, you know, it's all great and everything. It's just like, I just feel like there's so much less reality in this world these days. And I'm guilty of that. I'm super guilty of that because I'm like, oh, Oh, I have this channel now. I have like 3,500 subscribers. Like I have to keep up an image or be positive or make short videos or be goofy or be silly or be like, oh, I got a face tattoo in rehab. Like basically clickbait shit or fucking like record a fucking cover of a song, like some emo song from my fucking teenage years. Like what the fuck, dude? Like, and I always say like, oh, my channel is all about being real and not like editing shit. And you know, I went and edited like a couple videos ago, but and I'm like, oh, like I'm, you know, just being myself and talking. But I feel like I've strayed from that and that I am not like being myself or being brutally honest. Maybe I'm sugarcoating things or covering things up or trying to portray this positive image of myself. Anyway, it's like 1 a.m. here right now. I don't give a fuck when I post videos anymore. I don't give a fuck how often I post videos anymore. I don't give a fuck what algorithm bullshit this or that, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a fuck who I impress. I don't care what girls like me, what girls want to have sex with me, what girls want to fall in love with me. Because honestly, I think it's all bullshit and I don't give a fuck. I honestly don't even give a fuck about myself most of the time anymore. Like, I don't, honestly, I, you know, I, I drive the car, drive the car down the fucking freeway and think, what if I just gassed it? What if I just fucking laid on the gas and just fucking went just like straight into something or right off the road or just, what if I just never cared again? What if I just disappeared? What if I just relapsed? What if I just bought fentanyl and just fucking said, you know what? I'm gonna do this shit by myself and I'm just gonna die and people can just deal with that later and I don't give a fuck anymore. I don't know, thought crosses my mind. And people might watch this or, or people, you might be watching this right now if you made it through 33 minutes of me rambling about nothing. And you might be like, oh, oh, this guy's mentally ill. This guy's fucked up. He needs help. That's great. Cool. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't care anymore. And I'm sorry if you're somebody that cares about me or somebody that, like, wants me to succeed in all this stuff. Yeah, I want to succeed too, but I'm, I just feel like if I'm being realistic and I'm being honest, like, I don't fucking see myself doing anything. I just, yeah, maybe working some menial job. Maybe, maybe I'll become a fucking supervisor at a fucking grocery store and hopefully somebody there will appreciate me or something. Maybe I'll make a difference, you know, day to day, helping somebody get the right avocados or something. But I don't know. It's weird. Like, you know, sometimes like the way dogs like perceive me and the way dogs act around me feel like they have intuition in a way and today when uh 
but I had to leave and pack all my stuff. The dog was like out there like looking at me a certain way and like I was trying to close my door and he was standing there in the way of the door staring at me. I'm like, sorry buddy, I gotta go. It's just like, there's been other times in my life where it might not have been a dog, it might have been a person or whatever that, but it doesn't matter. None of this matters. None of it fucking matters. This is all bullshit and it's all trivial. My life is so trivial. I'm nothing like, you know, this is just the way it is. I can't do anything about it anymore. Like I can't, I'm sick of trying to change my life because I'm just a fuck up. I'm just a loser. I'm just somebody that's fucked their whole life away. Nobody, like I, I don't, I have always envied, envied people that could just be so closed off and so stoic and just like emotionless. Like I envy that because I know that tomorrow or the next day I'm going to go back to being me. I'm going to be fucking goofy and something will make me happy or feel motivated and I'll be goofy and all that shit. But I mean if I get deep down to like the core of who I am and, and the way I feel overall after all is said and done at the end of the night if i'm alone and i'm thinking about my life and myself and what it all boils down to this is how i feel this is exactly how i feel is that it's fucking pointless nothing matters i could go i don't know anyway i just wanted to get all that off my chest not for anybody at all besides myself I don't know if I feel any better. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't even know if I'm going to sleep tonight. I don't know if people that care about me will see this and be annoyed or worried or blah, blah, blah. But that's, I'm sorry. Like, that's, it's just reality. This is reality. This is who I am. I fucked up many times. I'll probably keep fucking up. I'm, I feel like I've been an outcast or a loser since I was a child. I've never felt right, even using drugs and drinking and socializing with people. <gasps> Excuse me. Yeah, it got easier, but when all was said and done, I still, excuse me, I still went to sleep feeling lonely. I still felt like a fake. I still felt like I didn't have friends that cared about me genuinely or wanted me to succeed. They just wanted to use me. And so, I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know what the next step is. I don't know what's gonna help or what, what you know? Yeah, I, I could just say, oh, just stay sober, stay completely sober, and that's gonna be the fucking key to everything. And maybe I, maybe that's what it was. Maybe, and maybe I fucked up by relapsing when that dude picked me up and shit. Maybe I just completely fucked up, and, and ever since then, you know, it's been like a week now, almost a week. Maybe this past week of my life has just been fucked because I fucked up. And because I continued to fuck up, even though I wasn't trying to get wasted or get high or anything. I just wanted to have two beers and, and chill out. And it fucked my life, you know? And there's other people that care about me. You know, it's not like it's the end of the world because this one girl fucking says she's done with me that quick. It's sad. It makes me very sad. It makes me feel like a piece of trash and that somebody could throw me away that easily and that I'm not that great or that important or that attractive or sexy or I'm not that good at sex or things like that, you know? Like, that's not everything. I don't know. Maybe I just need to find something that makes me happy and do that day to day. Maybe I need to just go help people. Maybe I need to just go help homeless people. Maybe I need to, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. But I had to record this video just to get, because I'm sitting there in the bed, just like fucking dead in my head. Like, it's fucking dull. Just like lost, just confused, just empty, just going the fuck. And so if I'm going to embrace the darkness and I'm going to be honest and I'm going to, you know, use this channel as some type of motivation or something or, or learning experience or, or just documenting my life and how I feel and everything, then I need to be honest and I need to be open even when it's bad and when shit's terrible, you know, which 
things could be way worse. I mean, I have a roof over my head. I have a place to sleep. I got food to eat. I can go down to the fucking casino and gamble if I want. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, that's what's been going on with me. And it sucks. Life sucks. Life is fucked up. And I need desperately to do something right. I have to follow this up with something right and do something good and be positive and and get through this because it's been a really rough week and and I uh, I feel very emotionless like I feel like there's a couple times I started to cry in this I feel like I usually cry a lot more I feel like over the last six seven months especially there's been times where I cried a lot but uh, I just don't feel like it anymore. I don't feel like being emotional anymore. I don't feel like being vulnerable anymore. I don't want to be unapologetically myself. Like, I just want to be completely closed off. And I don't think anybody cares enough to break through that wall. So if I can be, if I can put up this wall and just wait and see how it works out. Maybe eventually some people will come around that that want to care enough. But anyway, that's it. That's everything. I'm like really, really trying in a weird way. My fucking face tattoo is all fucked up too. It's not even, it healed and it's like the middle dot is not, is even, <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. <sighs> I'm a moron. I'm a fuck up. And that's why I went on the internet and said I'm a fucking heroin addict. And then came back the next time and said, oh yeah, here's all the downsides of addiction. Like, I'm all sad and all this shit. And then came back a third time on Suboxone and was like trying to be all happy and positive. And then the last time I feel like was the most real and the most honest I've been. But I just don't want to lie and say everything's great all the time and I'm just on this amazing path. I want to be honest and say shit's really fucked up. Shit's probably always going to be fucked up. I'm probably always going to fuck things up and I am not the best son. I'm not the best boyfriend. I'm not the best person. I'm not the best friend. I'm none of that. I just try my best and I hope I can do the right thing in the future, but I'm sorry to anybody I've hurt. I'm sorry to anybody that's believed in me and I've let down. I'm sorry, you know, doubt my parents will watch this, but I'm sorry to my parents for, I just, they are, I'm their only son and I'm an only child. And so I wish I could just be, I wish that they could be proud of me. I hope they could be proud of me one day. Anyway. All right, I guess um, I'm gonna just uh, end it here and try to see if I can get some sleep tonight because I'm sure I got a long drive tomorrow, most likely back to California. Um, there's things I want in this world to be true that I don't know if they are. There's things that I want to work out, but I don't know if they will. I want to be loved, I want to be understood, I want people to take the time to get to know me, but I can't expect that or ask that of anyone. It's just the way things are going to work out. Things are going to work out the way they're going to work out, and everything happens for a reason, and that's why I'm here right now, and that's why I recorded this video, because hopefully it makes some type of difference in my life, and hopefully by being honest and putting this out there, hopefully it, um, hopefully it makes sense to some point. Hopefully it makes sense of my life somehow. Hopefully after this, I can feel like I got things off my chest and things can come together. Anyway, thanks to anybody that watched this whole thing and listened and understood and comprehended it. Um, Somebody was like, 
you should do like a meetup of like your subscribers or your followers or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, right. That would be like one guy from like Scandinavia showing up, like asking me too many personal questions or like one like crazy horny chick on meth. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. That'd be awesome. That'd be amazing. If there was like people that, and I don't want, I don't want it to be like some type of meetup where I'm just like, fucking being praised like oh this is so amazing to meet you you're so great like i just want to hang out with people i just want to have friends that are just fucking normal people um it's so weird the way this light is and the way the camera is like you can see the reflection of my hand up in this corner anyway my life borat you ever heard of him all right have a good night